One man who knows a thing or two about space travel is former NASA administrator and retired astronaut Charles Bolden. He spoke to me from North Carolina and shared his view of SpaceX and his own experience in the beyond. It's a continuation actually of, of passenger flight. The, we've had an American company that worked with the Russians for a number of years up to about 2009 and, and flew paying passengers. So we've, we've, had, we've had civilians fly before and NASA had the payload specialist program during the early days of shuttle. So I think this, I look at this as a continuation, but it's, uh, it's pretty big time when you do what SpaceX is about to do. Uh, this trip is slated to happen in 2023. The rocket has yet to be built. What do you think the biggest challenges, concerns, and risks are? Well, the biggest challenges, concerns, and risks for anything that involves human space flight is uh, the life support system. Uh, you know, you've got, and, and Elon talked a little bit about it uh, yesterday in his announcement when he talked about uh, closed loop uh, on the water systems and the like when you're talking about going somewhere as far as the moon. Uh, although it's only days, you know, you, you can't go in and they can't just take a couple of bottles of water along with them so they've got to be able to have some way to either recycle water or produce it in on the shuttle we used uh, the fuel cells with oxygen and hydrogen and one of the byproducts was water so you're looking at closed loop life support systems for air water uh, filtering waste or at least taking care of waste and the like and um, you actually want to make sure that you're your uh, your systems are as reliable as possible. That's that's the biggest challenge. Only two dozen astronauts um, made that journey back in the Apollo era. Why is it taking so long to go back to the moon? Um, a couple of things. Again, you're going to get an opinion of one. Um, when we went to the moon, there was an, an incredible geo political imperative. We had to beat the Soviets. And um, I think you're going to, you know, people will start to see in all the documentaries about uh, Apollo 11 and how we got there that there was this space race, a real space race. And it was a matter of, back then, we thought it was a matter of, of, the, of the very survival of the nation uh, against the Soviet threat. So that was the big thing that we don't have anymore. We don't have a, uh, you know, a, a, an arch enemy as far as space is concerned. And it's because we partner with almost everybody that we can, uh, as much as we can't get along with the Russians here on Earth, uh, in space, they're probably our number one partner on the International Space Station. The two primary partners there are the U.S. and the Russian Space Agency, Roscosmos. Now, you've had the opportunity to visit some of SpaceX's competitors, like Blue Origin. There's also, of course, Virgin Galactic. How do you compare the efforts of SpaceX to what you've seen at Blue Origin yeah. and elsewhere? Well, I'll tell you, um, I, I think everybody's doing their utmost. Everybody's working at breakneck speed. Um, I, when we were talking a little bit beforehand, I, I referred to SpaceX and Blue Origin as the tortoise and the hare. And it's, I just use that term because SpaceX is very visible, very vocal, uh, sets great goals and everything. Uh, you have a company like Blue Origin that has many of the same goals and aspirations, but they're very quiet. Don't talk about it. They're just following a measure schedule of activities and I think um, you're gonna see that they're gonna be side by side when we finally start talking about humans uh, routinely in space on a commercial spacecraft uh, my, my expectation is that Blue Origin and SpaceX will be they'll be right out front uh, right alongside each other and you know the, that's why I refer to them as the tortoise in the hair and you've been up in space was it worth it oh man was it worth it you know I, I I got to free it. I, I just, all I had to do was be a Marine, which was easy for me. Uh, it is incredibly worth it for anybody. Um, the opportunity to see this planet from that vantage point is unlike anything else I think a human uh, can or will experience. I, I'm really excited about seeing Miyazawa uh, decide that he wants to take some artists because astronauts, people like me, we're not really good at storytelling. Uh, I work on it really hard, uh, and but I always still use the term awesome uh, for Earth, you know, the view of Earth from space, but awesome is an overused word. I think artists, uh, musicians, uh, visual artists, writers, they will probably help us understand this incredible planet on which we live far better than any scientist or mathematician or engineer or somebody like me can, can do.